Welcome back, Chappelle. All right. Y'all have been absolutely crushing it the last few days, and definitely want to just say I'm proud, and I really, really appreciate it. And But let's keep getting after it, okay? Now, biggest things that we've done into today in class, we went into the the new war that was going on in France, right? The War of the First Coalition, how that's gonna affect, right? Like like French international fervor. We talked about Napoleon getting his experience during this war. We talked about uh, the September massacres. We talked about the attack on the Tuileries, right? And how that all of Louis' power is now gone and the monarchy was officially abolished later on in the oncoming revolution, right? So now, since the monarchy is abolished, that means you've got no more need for Louis the 16th, right? Now that there is no such thing as a king inside of revolution and the monarchy is abolished, what France becomes is known as the French First Republic, right? The French First Republic is what they end up becoming. And in a republic, you have no need for any kings. So what happens to Louis in 1793? Louis is going to be executed in 1793. The National right Assembly right here, you don't have to write a convention. The National Assembly decides to put Louis on trial for his crimes, right? And in this revolutionary tribunal, it's absolutely hysterical, right? It's massive. People are screaming and yelling things for the stands, and people are freaking out. But here's the thing. There are a lot of people that don't want to see Louis executed, right? When we talked about the Declaration of the Rights of Man with the Marquis de Lafayette and everything like that, and this new document that he wrote that where he was outlining the basic rights of all the new people under the French revolutionary government, uh, they didn't actually want to get rid of the king, right? Like, he was forced out of his house during the Women's March, and all this other crazy stuff happened to him. Well, the thing about it is, the National Assembly was made up of several different members, right? All these members were in different clubs, right? And we talked about the two biggest clubs out of all of them were the Jacobins, or the Jacobins, and the Girondins, right? Now, the Jacobins outnumbered the Girondins, right? Mainly due to the fact that the Jacobins membership kept growing because of their violence and their want for that blood and bread, right? And the Girondins, on the other hand, did not want him to be executed. They did not want Louis to be executed. They wanted to keep their king so they could solve the revolution politically, right? But in January 1793, the Jacobins outnumbered the Girondins and they voted for his execution, right? So, and at the scaffold, he said, I forgive those who are guilty of my death, right? He basically, to his deathbed, said that he was not the one responsible for this revolution, that he forgives the people that are responsible for seeing that he dies, right? So really, 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 really intense moment in French history, and as Louis walked up the scaffolding, and so you know what a scaffold is, it's a big raised area, right? A big platform that's raised up above everyone else for their sights to be able to like look towards, right? And he said, I forgive those of you who are guilty of my death and he would be executed in January of 1793, and now France is completely without a king, right? He was executed in a large square that his grandfather, I wanna put his grandfather had built. You don't need to write that though, it's not necessarily important for you, right? So, when he was executed, what has now been created? This is important to jot this down. A very, Good job, Jolene. So impressed. A power vacuum, right? A power vacuum has been created. A power vacuum has been created by the like National Assembly because the king is now dead, right? Louis the Sixteenth would be executed by his own people underneath this revolution, and every all their advancements are going to be destroyed, right? So the biggest thing going forward, though, is that now that he is executed, that means this power vacuum has been created. Now, before we get to who fills that void, let's talk about the device that was adopted to kill him with, right? First of all, let's go ahead and fix this real, real fast. It's supposed to be guillotine, no in. All right, so view, present. All right, there we go. Now, the guillotine is the new tool of egalitarian justice, right? Now, what do I mean by egalitarian? The guillotine was seen as a more fair way to execute people. It was adopted because it was believed that all people of all classes, regardless of your money, would be killed swiftly and humanely by this device, right? Invented by, invented by Dr. Joseph G. 
guillotine, right? Guillotine actually is the name of the man who created it, which ironically enough, the guillotine had existed for several hundred years, but he perfected its design creating this specific apparatus, right? So the way it works is that this thing right here is about eight to nine feet tall, right? You need it to be tall so it can pick up speed, right, as it's coming down. See this little hole right here? That would be lifted up and people would be laid face down on top of this bench, right? Their head would go inside the hole, the block comes back down, and it holds them securely in place. And then there was a basket put on the other end of the actual guillotine itself, right? And then what ends up happening is they would say your last words, your last rites, you would say a prayer, and then they would go weak, and they pull on it, and it releases a lever, and this thing comes flying down, and it cuts the person's head off immediately. Done and done, right? So the biggest thing though is also it was built up on a scaffold and the seat actually lifted up so they could slide the body off and it would fall through a trap door and then down onto the, the ground below a scaffold so they could get the next person up there, right? This is like the Walmart Express lane of execution, the execution devices. They're trying to move people in and out of there quick, right? Now also it was painted red for two reasons, uh, like one, the red is of course the color of the revolution and then also it was red because it needed to hide and mask the blood that was coming out of a lot of people's heads, right? So the guillotine was the device that was made and manufactured to actually execute people much faster, right? And people would come from all around to witness these deaths, right? This is the execution of Louis the 16th by guillotine, right? As you can see, the guillotine is very large. It's built up on the scaffold. Here are people that came to watch standing down below and his Louis the Sixteenth head, head, Louis the Sixteenth's head, was actually lifted up out of the basket and shown to the crowd, right? So everyone could see it, and they could see it, that their king was now dead, right? Now there was a lot of experiments that happened with these heads as well. Later on, apparently, a lot of scientists um, tried to like pump blood in there to see if like the head would come back to life or would tell people that like, hey, your head's about to be cut off. Could you blink a couple times so we can see if you're still alive? But of course, like no one's going to be able to do that, and. Recent studies in rats have actually shown apparently that there's a chance that there's some activity, but you're, you're still dead, like during this, like once this actually happens. So the guillotine also was manufactured into little small guys too. They made like little tiny ones for kids to play with and stuff like that. So they could kind of, it was like a piece of propaganda, right? Trying to encourage them to be okay with the revolution, right? So the craziest thing about it though, is that the king is now dead. The guillotine is now fully functioning. It's the thing that is executing people very, very quickly. But again, there's now a huge power vacuum, right? Who is gonna fill that vacuum? This group, right? This thing known as the Committee of Public Safety, right? So the Committee of Public Safety is gonna take over following the death of Louis XVI, right? They needed some type of organization to take over as the ruling body of France, right? And what it did is it acted as the de facto wartime monarchy, right? It acted as like the new monarchy, quote unquote, in France, okay? So during this time period though, the Committee of Public Safety, right, is going to be a 12-guy executive branch, right? A group of 12 men that would act as a group that could rule over France efficiently, right? Now, the thing about it was their biggest thing was violence, right? One of the biggest things that the uh, Committee of Public Safety does after it was a committee for a very short amount of time is they actually purged and killed a lot of the Girondin members of the Committee of Public Safety, right? And it was started by two very specific people, right? Maximilian Robespierre and Georges Danton, right? Both of these guys that you need to jot this down are Jacobins, right? They're Jacobin leaders, okay? So Maximilian Robespierre, and George Danton, right? Maximilian Robespierre and George Danton both were bourgeois members in, for, in their like pre-revolutionary life, right? They were very intense figures. Uh, Maximilian Robespierre has a crazy story to how he ends up being dead, right? So, but George Danton and Maximilian Robespierre loved the violence. They were in favor of all of this extreme violence, right? So Maximilian Robespierre is the one that kind of emerges as the most prominent leader out of all of them, right? And that's him right there, actually like pictured on the left. Maximilian Robespierre is a very extreme figure, a Jacobin leader, and becomes a leader of the Committee of Public Safety, right? Now, as it's going forward though, so remember, the Committee of Public Safety pretty much replaced the king, right? Now this, on the other hand, is George Danton. Whoa. All right, George, calm down. Ooh, ooh. Looks like a 
Toad. Like, like, so anyway, but these two guys would become the biggest, like, most powerful leaders within all of France, right? And then they had one other guy that worked for them very, very closely, right? And that guy was named Jean Paul Marat, right? We talked about Jean Paul Marat already. Remember when we talked about the Women's March on Versailles and that there was a newspaper article that was released that said that Louis was like stomping on tricolor cockades and like it led to the Women's March, right? Jean Paul Marat was actually the owner of the newspaper that came out that actually issued that. He's the guy that lived in the sewers whenever he was on the run from people trying to capture him for all of the articles that he was writing. And he had that really, really bad skin disease where he would actually live and sit in a bath for like eight hours a day because he had a very, very disgusting skin disease that he needed to like actually like soak to actually prevent his skin from like chipping and getting very, very gross and scabbed out. Now, these guys are now in charge of France, right? Maximilien Robespierre, Georges Danton, and then Jean-Paul Marat is like their little art, their propaganda artist, right? So the Committee of Public Safety comes in and does some crazy stuff, right? Like, so they do absolutely insane things. They're going to try and basically leave all of pre-revolution France in the past, right? They're like, we don't want anything that stinks of the old France. We want new French stuff, right? So you know what we should do? Let's change our calendar, right? They went to 10 months a year and they renamed all the months and all the days of the week, right? So like for example, the month from July to August, it was split in half and it created a new month out of it and they called it Thermidor because it was the hot one, right? So they renamed all the months of the year and they went to 30 days per month, right? And it had to be an exact perfect thing, right? So you would start on a Sunday or like you would start on a Monday and end on a Monday. But wait a minute, they renamed all the days of the week. And some of y'all are immediately saying, well, wait a minute, Mr. Terry, the math doesn't work out properly. Because if you have seven day long weeks and you have 10 months and you're supposed to start and end on these weeks every single time the exact way, that doesn't make any sense because the months would need to be 35 days, you idiot. Rose Pierre, get it together. Well, funny thing about it is they tried to cancel Christianity altogether, the Committee of Public Safety, so they got rid of Sundays. So their month, their weeks were only six days long, right? So they canceled Sundays. They closed down churches. They had an entire convent of nuns executed because they refused to give up their faith, right? Like So the Committee of Public Safety is wildly crazy, right? They wanted to turn Notre Dame into a shopping mall and they wanted to close down all the churches. They started a completely new religion called the Cult of the Supreme Being, right? And it leads to this, the reign of terror, right? Which is where we're going to start our stuff tomorrow, all right? So I will see you guys then. Y'all have a great weekend if you're D and F period, and y'all have a great evening if you're A period. And I'll see you guys tomorrow, all right? Y'all have a good one.